Hi folks, just wanted to give you a tour here of the Red C170 and some of the modifications I've made to it. Starting up at the top, we have the AI Hydra 26 HD light. Down in the main display, I started out with the Marco dry rock and the Carib C special grade sand. We'll come back up to the main display in a minute, but down here in the sump, one of the things I want to do was reduce the number of pumps and wires I have. So I did build a custom manifold. We start down here with the Octopus Varios 2, 800 gallons per hour. I keep that set at max, and that pumps water up this one inch tube into the manifold. The first one reduces to three quarter inch black vinyl and connects to this two little fishies Fosban reactor, which is full of BRS 0.8 box carbon. Then we continue on to this next drop down here, which also reduces to three quarter inch piping, and then connects to black lock line with this flare connector you see. And that just lets me sort of angle and position this inside this refugium to sort of cycle the water and help rotate uh, the chato when it's a little smaller. Then the water runs out of there, out of this three quarter inch pipe down into this coarse black mesh filter before returning to the pump area. Any water passing through then travels down the one inch line and up into the main display and out the return here. Coming back down to the refugium, this is the innovative marine two-in-one chato light. I have a little Velcro on the wall strip here and uh, some Velcro on this L bracket so I can move this light up and down on that Velcro strip though I tend to keep it flush because that way it reduces spill elsewhere in the sump. Likewise, I sprayed the walls of this uh, refugium box here with a uh, Krylon Fusion black paint to avoid any spill out into the larger sump that might grow uh, unwanted nuisance algaes in there. Now while you can't see it, underneath this refugium is a chamber where all the return plumbing from the main display dumps out and that chamber is full of marine pure ceramic one and a half inch balls, which just gives me a lot more surface area for my healthy bacteria. That water then travels into my filter sock, which is a Red Sea 225 micron felt sock, and into the main sump area here. The water is heated by these two Eheim 100 watts. Only one's required. I have two for redundancy, and just make sure both orange lights are coming on occasionally, and I'll replace if one ever fails. Here we have the Bubble Magnus Recurve 5 skimmer. And you'll notice that it's hooked up on the inlet to another Fosban 150 reactor from Two Little Fishies, which is full of CDX carbon dioxide absorption media. And the goal here is I'm trying to now increase my pH. I did want it lower. It was being wintertime around here, 7, 8, 7, 9, um, which was great to keep toxic ammonia down when I first started the system. But now I want to get it above pH 8.0 because I want the better coral growth as I move into wanting coralline and, and getting that started. I'm about four months in on this system now. Now over here on the wall, we have two Camor X1 Pro Wi-Fi dosing pumps. These are also nice for clutter because they can be daisy chained. So this one plugs into this one and only this one needs to be plugged into the wall. And then there's no other control units. I can control these with my phone, do all the setup there. So again, less clutter. This one that is hooked up is, uh, the tube is held in place by this coral box for a tube holder. And then of course the feed line is coming down into Tropic Marin's All for Reef, which I moved to because again, when in the previous setup I had, I was using Calquasser. And I found that the precipitation, that white chalky buildup on the pumps and the walls was very frustrating, hard to remove, and was over time damaging my equipment. That may have been user error, but I had trouble with Calcwasser on that front, so I've enjoyed the Tropic Aaron more. We're four months in, we'll see, but so far, so good. Here we have the Watchdog leak detector. Basically, if water ever gets on the ground here, this thing sends off a loud, loud audible alarm. I have another one of these on the ground behind the tank. I found those very helpful. Uh, this here now, you see these white dots with the labels? These are NFC tags. Basically, 
you program these so that when you tap them with your phone, they'll do something to a smart object in your home. So I have them hooked up to the sockets of my Casa Smart Strip, which all of my tank equipment is plugged into. So if I tap pump, I can turn the pump on and off, for instance. It works okay. It doesn't work on the first tap all the time. I tend to just ask Alexa to do it, so I don't use them that much, but that's a thing if that's interesting to you. And then we have these 3M uh, command strip broom holders, which uh, Costco has a great deal on a four pack, but you can buy these in any box store. And because of these command strips, basically when you take these off, they'll leave no mark behind. So they're great for what they are and leave no mark when you're done. In the back there, you can see the Tunes 3155 auto top off unit. That's what I use for auto top off. And there's a five gallon bucket behind the tank, we'll see in a minute, to feed that. On the other side there is just the Varios controller for the pump. Like I say, I keep that on max all the time. The light that you're seeing here is just a set of uh, inexpensive LED uh, light strips I think I found on Amazon. Basically anything will do. Uh, I just plug those again into my smart strip to control them. And then down here on the very bottom, you see that, that black filter. That's a green killing machine, nine watt UV filter. I put that in on, I wanna say week four when I got it bloom, uh, cloudy water um, and it cleaned it up in a day or two and I've left it running 24 7 super inexpensive when you can find coupon codes for Petco or Chewy um, so I'm not too worried about ever failing I think it's probably helping me and I can't imagine it's hurting me so I just leave it going okay so that's what's going on inside the tank let's move up here to the main display you'll see right here Nero 3 pump head and another Nero 3 pump head these things work great Another thing I really enjoy about them is they have a very small control unit on the main power line, and you mostly control them through the app on your phone. And again, reducing clutter, that's really nice. Most power heads have a big control box with a dial, and it's just one less thing I wouldn't have to worry about. In the tank itself right now, I pretty early on, I have the yellow tang, I have the six line Raz, a pair of clowns, and a spotted tail go, uh, blenny in here somewhere. Uh, the yellow tang, of course, is only temporary. This tank isn't big enough for him, so he's already got a future home planned out. But uh, I want to enjoy him for a while. He's a, you know, about the prettiest kind of cleanup crew you can have. And then, of course, uh, I have a cleanup crew in here. You'll find Troka snails, Fighting Conk, uh, a Nasarius snail, and a couple blue leg hermits to keep things uh, cleaned up. Also in here, we see the two little fishies feeding ring. This is super handy. Basically, you put your dry food in the middle there by hand or in your auto feeder, and it won't blow around the surface and get pulled down the return right away. Instead, until it gets heavy enough and wet enough, then it will sink down and get blown around by your pumps. Um, works great. Saves a lot of food, saves a lot of waste. Now, moving over here behind the tank, you can see there the five gallon uh, bucket of water Okay, and that can be lifted out when it's empty, but otherwise there's really no way to get it. I got it really tucked back there. So what I do to fill it is I just put my, uh, turn my light on on my phone and lean it against the side of that bucket. That makes it glow and I can see the water line. I put another five gallon bucket on the ground here, put a pump in it, run a hose into that one and just pump the five gallons over real quick. Keep it topped off. I only have to do that about every week and a half or so, two weeks. So it's been pretty great. While we're over here, this thing you see right here is a power failure alarm. Basically, if this socket loses power, and thus my tank, um, this will set off an audible alarm and light up the wall. And that's just in case it happens while we're sleeping, that will just hopefully wake somebody up uh, so we can come out here and get the generator turned on if needed. Going back behind the tank again, we have uh, a few items back here to point out. We have the ink bird uh, flashing red there. Uh, it keeps my tank at 78 degrees. Uh, it's the Inkbird 308S and does a great job. And then the two white uh, strips you see on the left and right, those are the Casa 6 Outlet Smart Strips. And those things are really incredible. Um, basically, you can control every socket with your phone. You can set schedules. So like my refugium light, I can make sure I turn it on and off at a set time. If I want to turn my skimmer off for a few hours after certain additives, instead of trying to remember to turn it back on, I just set a timer on that socket to turn itself on in two hours. And I can do all that while I'm in the tank and I don't have to worry about forgetting, which I used to always do. So that's been super handy as well. 
Um, I think that's about it. The only other tips uh, I guess I would throw out there is if you do custom plumbing, don't skimp on these unions. These things allow you to separate and pull apart all this piping. If you need to get in here and clean or make any changes or introduce new equipment, once you do hard plumbing, you don't want to find it difficult to navigate your sump. So I'll throw that out there. Otherwise, I hope this has helped you folks. Um, thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye-bye.